That was all right. I'm not going to lie to you. That we did much better when I was back there. Do we got to try that one more time? I think we should. Hold on. I got to try that one more time. Let's. No, hold on. Hold. Wait, 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 wait. <coughs> all right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a very special guest host in the house tonight. International celebrity. You might have seen him on Showtime, the CW, or at a local buffet destroying that bitch before COVID shut it all down. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your host, Oscar Obias. <laughs> There we go. That's much better. Now we're ready for a show, goddammit. Now we're ready to rock. <laughs> I know, it was a little jarring. Some of you guys were like, that's the fucking guy that took our ticket. What the shit? <laughs> uh, how are we doing Saturday night? We're doing good? Yes? Good. I waited for you, ma'am. I'm glad you made it back in time. She's like, don't start the show without me. I'm like, but you're not my boss. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, Saturday night, man. We're going to have some fun. Hope you guys are ready to rock. Thanks all. Who have you guys out there on the streets doing your thing? What's it called? Taste of Downtown? Or is anybody out there doing that? No? <laughs> Fuck that. You guys are like, absolutely not. We came here straight from the house. So we didn't leave. We were just watching, you know, fucking uh, Breaking Bad all day long. You were eating at the restaurant? Oh, well, that'll hit you pretty hard in about an hour, I would imagine. So <laughs> let's get the show rocking and rolling. You know what I'm saying? We always get a lot of regulars here. Who's been here before? Yes, most of you guys. All right, rock and roll. Who has not been here before? You guys? Okay. Are you guys local? No, you guys are long. No, where are you guys from? Dayton. Dayton. Oh shit, they made the big trek. Wow. Yeah, wow. There's even less to do in Dayton than there is to do here. Yeah, so no one. Where are you guys from? Behind. Placerville. Placerville. Fuck. Yeah, we're bringing them in from the big towns tonight. That's another. That how long is Pla how far away is Placerville? Seventy-five miles or so. We don't put a time limit on it, sir. You just live one quarter mile at a time, like Vin Diesel. I like it. There's no time I fell asleep for the whole drive. I don't know how fucking long it was. Come on in, guys. How you doing? Yep, see Jesse there. Let him give your ticket. Come on in. Have a seat. We got a front row up here that's perfectly open. I know you don't want to get talked to, but if you actively avoid it, I'm just going to come out there and fucking sit at your table if I have to. Come on up. It's too dark back there. You come on up here, brother. Yep, how you guys doing? Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Nicely done. I like your little... I do come here quite often, unfortunately. Uh, no. Welcome aboard, sir. How you guys doing? You guys local? Yeah. Have you guys been here before? Yeah. Wonderful, man. Well, thanks, man. Come welcome. How about you guys? You guys local? Yes. Have you been here before? Wonderful. I love it. See our regulars coming out to support. I love that shit. Well, I'm Oscar Obis. I'll be your guys' host tonight, man. We're gonna have some fun. See, these guys were brave right here. You pussies. All you guys. <laughs> every single one of them. I told every one of them when they walked in. Make sure you guys sit up front. <laughs> we don't want to feel there. Okay. And then somebody was even like, Okay, I will absolutely. And then they went to sit in the back. I'm like, No, fucker. That's the back. It's not opposite day. You're sitting in the very back. It's dark back here. We don't have that much people. It's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what it is. They don't want to be picked on. But I'll tell you, I'll go sit at your goddamn table and have an hour-long conversation with you if I have to. All right? I have that kind of time and dedication to my craft. Okay? No, it's good, man. We got a good group of you guys in here, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I did not have a lot of faith in tonight based on what's going on. Let's do a head count. won't take very long. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. The mighty nineteen. Give it up for you guys, yeah? Nineteen! Shit! I gotta tell you, man, I know that seems like a small group, like nineteen. When you say it out loud, it doesn't seem like a lot, but here's the deal. This is a professional comedy show. I've been doing this for 14 years. Your headliner's been doing this for, what, 15, 14, 15 years as well? Long time. We have professionals. We're gonna perform as if there were 20 people in this bitch. I'll tell you that right now. You're all going to get your fucking money's worth. <laughs> I know you all paid your good hard money. One fucking guy in the room paid to get in here tonight. Uh, the rest of you comp bastards. No, it's going to be fun, man. It is. It's gonna, we're going to have a good time tonight, man. It's been, it's been fun since the last time I've been uh, on this stage. Uh, has anybody seen me here before? Any of the regulars have been here? Because I'm here quite a bit. No? Okay. Well, last time I was on this stage was a few months ago. Uh, it's been a very eventful couple months, man, because as of today, my son turned two months old today. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And he's my first. I'm a brand new dad, man. It's been, it's, thank you, man. It's been, it's been crazy. It was insane. Two months ago, when he was getting ready to be born, I was on stage. Not this stage. I was doing shows in Reno for the whole weekend, and I was on red alert. It was crazy. I had my cell phone out, the volume up, because it was literally any text, any phone call could have been the one. And that's never happened, but I've never been in that situation. So I was on alert, doing shows, checking my shit, freaking out. It was a crazy time. What's that? That's right, sir. I'll handle the jokes. There's, uh, 
the question and answer portion doesn't come until later, okay? <laughs> we're, we're, we'll do that after the show. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it was insane, though. It really was, man. The week before, leading up to when his due date was coming, I got a phone call from my girlfriend. She went to the doctor, and she went for a normal checkup. They called her up. She called me up. She says, hey, the doctor says I'm already at four centimeters dilated, which is crazy. My original reaction was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> because I... <laughs> I've never had a kid before. I don't know what that means. She's like, four centimeters means labor has started. Like, we are in the process. At 10 centimeters, you push. Like, that's so I stress shit. Uh, and then the rest of the weekend was just on high. We didn't leave the house that whole weekend. We sat, she went and bought, like, a medicine ball, like a fitness ball, and just sat there doing this shit the whole weekend while we just watched fucking Netflix. And she's just <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm trying to jumpstart the labor. I'm like, you're going to... Give him a concussion. <laughs> He's going to come out all disoriented like an eight-year running back and shit, like <laughs> ready to join a class action lawsuit and stuff, like <laughs> retiring at a young age. Like, come on, you're all just banging his head into your vagina. I'm the only one who gets to do that. Like, come on now. Like, chill out. And she's like trying to explain everything to me, like getting ready, because she has two kids, right, from her marriage, and which she's no longer in. <laughs> Relax. She... She switched carriers, all right? She's, she upgraded her data plan. You know, now she's got, she's got the unlimited plan now. You know what I'm saying? She's very happy. I call it, I call it 5G because she can get it anywhere. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where we're at now. But she's upgraded. She's got two kids, so she knows the deal. She's trying to tell me, explain to me. I'm like, what are you, four centimeters? Like, what does that mean? She's like, well, imagine. It's one, two, three. Four. I'm like, did you get fisted by your doctor? Dude? What the fuck happened? Jesus Christ, what the hell's happening right there? I'm like, I'm, again, I'm the only one who gets to do that shit. Like, what's going on right now? This is insane. Her doctor's a woman, too, which was hot. So, um, it was crazy. It was a very, very stressful week. The whole weekend, nothing happened. We're sitting there, we're waiting. The following week, she goes back for another checkup. They call me, and she says, we're at five centimeters now. Five centimeters. I'm like, one centimeter in a week... To me, it does not sound like a ton of progress. She's like, no, we're making a lot of progress because today they detached my sack. Now, look, I'm a man, right? I don't want any doctor's appointment ending with the words detaching sacks. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear that shit. So I'm, uh, it's bad news right off the bat. She's like, no, they swept my membrane. Does any women know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about, ma'am? Yeah, they swept my membrane. I'm like, this just sounds grosser and grosser. I'm like, what does that mean? Explain it to me. She goes, well, they stuck a finger in. I'm like, here we go again. God damn it. Like, what's going on right now? She's like, they swept it. They detached my sack from the uterus, which is designed, apparently, for those who don't know, it's, that's designed to jumpstart natural labor, as well, as it turns out, as my gag reflex, because that shit is disgusting. Yuck. So I'm like, all right, here we are, five centimeters. So we stressed and we waited, right? And we waited the whole time. And it was a crazy process. She drove herself to the airport. Or the airport, the fucking hospital. I don't know why I just said airport. That was weird. She drove herself to the hospital. It was fucking crazy. We didn't expect it to happen. My kid waited until I was done with my shows. And I got home. He's a very appropriate comedian's son. He waited until I was done. And then he fucking came very quickly. And they, it's like you see in all the movies and TV shows, all these births are always so dramatic, right? They're always such a big, big to-do. I have the whole birth on video. I recorded the whole goddamn thing, right? And the whole thing lasts maybe three minutes long. It's maybe three minutes. We were totally chill. And then it's funny because she was trying to be so proper through the whole process. She's like, oh, I don't want to cuss, forget the whole time. She's like, oh, fudge, it hurts so much. Oh, heck, you know, like that. And then once the labor started, the first thing you hear in the video is her in the background go, motherfucker, like it's just, which is how every video should start. <laughs> like it was just great. She screwed the whole video, maybe three minutes. It turns on in the corner. I set it up. You hear her scream in pain. And there's about 45 seconds of me <laughs> going like this. Then there's a squirt, and you hear the baby cry. One push, <laughs> and the nurse is like, he looks like you. I go, fuck yeah, and that's the whole video. Like that's it. Not a lot of magic to it. It's very quick, matter of fact. But it was an interesting process. One of the toughest things for us, for me personally, was naming the baby, coming up with a name for the baby. That was tough for me. Because if it was a girl, we had two beautiful names. 
like ready to go. It was just a matter of which one we liked better. And the other one probably would have been the middle name. Like it was, we were set. And then as usual, a penis came along and fucked the whole thing up. <laughs> this is like anything else in life, just <laughs> penises, just ruining shit left and right. Because to me, coming up with a boy's name was way tougher. Like, I don't know if any of you find this, but like, if you think of like a boy's name or like a male name, immediately you get like an image of what that name is attached to. More so when you come up with like a girl's name. Girls' names are very versatile. But you come up with a guy's name, you hear a name, you're like, I knew, a especially if you, had, you knew somebody like, but fuck that. Because she's throwing out names and suggestions to me, right? She's like, what about Jacob? I'm like, every Jacob I've ever met eats his boogers. I'm like, I'm going to do that. I don't mean like eight. I mean eats currently. Eats <laughs> like a present-day booger eater. <laughs> you know, like, She's like, oh, what about Chase? I'm like, oh, sounds like a date rapist. Like, that's not going to work, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. You know somebody like that. You know a Chase. I can tell. What is true? She's like, what about Sebastian? I'm like, Sebastian was a kid who bit me in the fourth grade in the lunch line. This poor little mentally handicapped kid thought I was cutting in line. So he grabbed my arm. I she took a big old bite, and then he, I slapped the shit out of him. I feel bad about it, but I slapped the shit out of him, and he went down. Poor Sebastian was just trying to get some square pizza, and he got Will Smithed. <laughs> so no, I don't want to do that. And I love my girlfriend, but she, she's not great at coming up with names. I love my stepkids. I love them. But they have the whitest fucking names on planet Earth. She's got a seven-year-old girl, four-year-old boy. Their names are Riley and Tucker. Holy shit, that's white. That's fucking white. That's white. That's like white on white on just white. Kelly Clarkson eating white rice on a paper paint in a snowstorm. Fucking white on white on white on white. And I am Mexican. Relax. Never know how that's going to go nowadays. So <laughs> especially in a crowd this diverse. You just never know. But I want my kid to have at least a little hint of you know, biracial in his name, just a little bit, but it's a fine line to walk because it can't be too ethnic because it has to match with Riley and fucking Tucker, too. <laughs> and the shit can't, I got, they're trying to think, you know, 10 years down the road when I got to yell at these kids and the shit has to match. It can't be off. It's got to be all together, right? It can't be too ethnic. If it's even kind of too ethnic, it's going to set the whole thing off. I can't be like, Riley, Tucker, Pablo. That shit doesn't work. Two of those things buy drugs from the third thing, okay? <laughs> i got to saddle these kids with that for the rest of their lives. When he was born, they did the mother-baby bonding where they immediately, you know, put him on her chest and she held him for about an hour, right? They just lay there. Within the first hour, he crapped on her chest twice, <laughs> which once again, that's... Only I'm allowed to do that. You know what I'm saying? So what's all these people cutting in line? We decided on a name. We went with uh, Owen. That's his name? Yeah, Owen. He's got my middle name, Owen Oscar Ovius. That's uh, my name is his middle name, I should say. So Owen Oscar Ovius is his name. We figured Owen was fitting because that's, you know, what we're going to be doing for the rest of his life anyway is Owen. So I figured that was appropriate. You know what I'm saying? All right, I've been up here long enough. You guys ready to do this? Yes, you guys ready for your headliner? You guys ready to rock Saturday night? Good Christ. <laughs> let's, uh, let's try that one more time. Are you guys ready for your headliner? Yes? <laughs> All right. She's very funny, man. This is my first chance getting a, to work with her. It was a blast watching her do her thing last night, man. It's very, very funny. She came all the way from Georgia to be here. And she's been here before, which means she decided to fucking come back. So that's points right away in her favor, man. You guys are going to have a blast with her. Give it up for the very funny Jenna Kim Jones. Woo! Hello! Let's hear it for me! Yeah! Oscar was being a real gentleman. I was going to give you guys the full, like, you know, uh, trying to get out of the pool move. You know, you know the move where you're like, oh, this was a bad idea. And you got to do the one leg, the other leg. And they call the lifeguard to come over because they're not sure you're going to make it. Woo! 
It's amazing I'm here, everybody. It's a miracle I'm here. I'm here and I'm wearing pants with a button on them. Yes! Crushing it. Oh, let's get through this fun night. I hear there's a big party outside. What's it? What's happening out there? Huh? All you can eat outside? What are you doing in here? <laughs> are you kidding me? What am I doing in here? Oh, it is good to be here. Let's see. I got a lot of stuff I want to talk to you guys about. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> We're survivors. You know, I'm not even wearing anything from Costco tonight. This is like, I'm like dressed up formal for you people. Okay? <laughs> Jeans with a button, nothing from Costco. I'm telling you. If 75% of your wardrobe is not from Costco, who are you? The queen? Honestly, Costco is an American treasure. It's a crazy place. You guys shop at Costco? You were since yesterday. Oh, man, you fought your way through Costco yesterday. <sighs> Came out on the other side with $200 less. <laughs> 300 What'd you buy, a canoe? <laughs> That's next month. Costco's amazing. You sign up for Costco and you're like, yes, I will spend $100 on four items every time I come in this store. Every time. It doesn't matter. You come in, you're like, all I'm here for is that $4.99 chicken. And you leave $200 less and you get home and you're like, this is too much hummus. <laughs> you bought two chickens yesterday. How were they? You only ate one? You ate an entire chicken yesterday? Sir, what are you on, keto? What's going on? That's a lot of chicken. <laughs> I do wonder about the size of Costco chickens. Where are they getting all those big chickens, and where are the little ones? Still growing. Smiths. <laughs> They're at Smiths. <laughs> Are you guys having fun tonight? You happy to be here? Did someone force you to be here? What's happening? We got this back row. They seem like they're having a pretty okay time. <laughs> they're hiding. I l no, you're wonderful. I'm glad you guys are here. Costco's great. I mean, how many places do you want to be in the daytime that have a bouncer? You know? Have you ever s noticed that? You cannot get into Costco without holding that card high above your head. Or that lady. It's always the same kind of lady, right? She's got a certain look, right? She looks like, uh, like maybe like a Karen. She does. She's the Costco Karen. If you don't hold your card high above your head, you're not going to find out how much they're charging for a gallon of pickles. It's not happening. Okay? Buckle up. Karen will get you. I got hit by a car. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It was an electric car. <laughs> So it was more like just like a tap, you know what I mean? It's just like a, just like a just little, oh, oh, I didn't hear you coming. Yeah. Because you can't hear him. Mm -mm. I don't know if you've ever heard a Prius try and honk its horn. It sounds, it's, <coughs> that's what it sounds like. That horn is, <coughs> right? <laughs> I lived in California. I had a Prius. It was a good car for California because you just blend in with all the other Prii on the road. Yeah, yeah. They have a button on, they have a, if you've ever been inside a Prius, there's like a button that says turbo mode. Did you know that? Yeah. You push that button and it's like, it just kind of like lets out like a little fart and then you just keep going. <laughs> like it's not, I don't know why they put that there. It's a trick. Nothing happens when you push that button. Nope. Turbo mode's a lie. It's a lie. But Prius, they're fine. I don't live in California anymore. When I moved to Georgia, people saw my Prius and they were like, what is that? I was like, oh, pfft, that? Ugh. I know, right? That's just the car top carrier for my SUV. <laughs> Go over, pick it up, put it on top. <laughs> this lady's my only fan here, and I like her, okay? We're best friends now. I'm doing this show for you and you alone, okay? Just kidding. I love you all. Stay here. Don't leave. We have two fantastic mustaches going on in this, cr in this crowd. Two, three! Three, four, whoa, five. Everybody, oh my goodness. There are more men in this crowd with amazing mustaches than without. Congratulations. This is a tough guy city. We got a bunch of tough guys here. I love it. What's this relationship right here? 
brother and mother? What? You're here with your two sons? Oh my goodness, that's so nice. Ah, Father's Day gift. You're like, peace out, family. I'm out of here. I'm going to go see this weird comic I've never heard of. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel like this show's more for you, Mom, but you guys are good sons. Only one of your sons has a fantastic mustache, though. Where's your mustache? <laughs> Mom, three under the bus. Can't grow one. Well, let's get back to my rant on electric cars, right? Those are a thing. People want them to be more of a thing. I get it. Gas is expensive, but, you know, here we are. Uh, the big thing now, though, besides electric car, is the self-driving car. Oh, no? No for the self-driving car, huh? Who wants one? Nobody here wants a self-driving Y'all think you're better drivers? Really? Cruising down the freeway, drinking from your... 100 ounce soda, <laughs> reaching for whatever's in the passenger seat, texting your family. I get it. I understand the fear, but I feel like, I don't know, how many times have you ended up in your parking spot at home? You're sitting there, you turn off the car, and you think to yourself, how did I get here? <laughs> now that moment doesn't have to fill you with fear. I don't know. Did I hit someone? I was listening to a podcast. I don't know. Again, my only fan right here. We're going to get through this, guys. We got a solid two and a half more hours of jokes. Don't worry. And you can't leave. You're obligated. <laughs> 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 I'm just teasing you. Imagine if we had self-driving cars years ago. Every time your dad was like, don't make me come back there. He could have come back there. I want a self-driving car. I do. I'm a mom. I drive a minivan. I'd like to take a nap. It sounds great. Self-driving car. I'd like to watch a movie in my minivan, too. But I can't because i got to drive it. Here's the thing. My husband wants a Tesla, right? Tesla. He talks about a Tesla all the time. I'm like, I do not want a car named Tesla. Tesla sounds like someone who's trying to flirt with my husband on Facebook. <laughs> I am threatened by Tesla, all right? I don't want that. No thanks. Teslas are not marketed to women. They are marketed to men. My husband wants one so bad. He talks about it all the time. Oh, the Tesla. It's such a cool car. It, like, knows everything. It knows where all the other cars. It has ludicrous mode. You can go from, like, zero to 904.1 seconds. I'm like, okay, but, like, how many cup holders does it have? <laughs> like, I want, like, the important questions. Like, because for women, our cars, they're like, they're like our purses. They're just like very expensive portable trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, tough room. <laughs> tough room. I love it. Tough call. Nope, I, w I don't want a Tesla. Here's what I want, all right? I want a self-driving car. I'm going to be like, my self-driving car, his name is Leo. I want to get in my self-driving car and be like, hey, Leo, mama had a hard day. <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> the lights dim. The driver's seat becomes a massage chair. Boys to men starts blaring on the radio. <laughs> I'm like, let's go, Leo. And he takes me all the way to the Arby's drive through <laughs> where I can get all the meats <laughs> and all the sauces because, hey, Mama's not driving. And then I'm like, hey, Leo, take me home and I'm at Target. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes lit up. <laughs> we must be the same age. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Um, the other day I was watching, uh, well, I wasn't really watching. I was watching my husband scroll through, you know, TV. It's not like, it's not 
we don't really like do the channels anymore. It's more of like a um, virtual walk through Blockbuster, right? Just this endless scrolling through. My husband was trying to find something to watch, and he started a show and stayed on it just long enough for me to become emotionally invested. And he's like, bam, let's change the channel on you. And I'm like, whoa, hold up. I am watching this. This was a show about a person who ate 12,000 calories a day. Whoa, right? Tell me more. And this wasn't just like, this wasn't like an athlete. This wasn't like Michael Phelps or someone who likes, you know, exercises 100 hours and, every, you know, whatever. This was just like a normal person who ate 12,000 calories. And in my head, I'm like, oh, my goodness. That's got to be like 12 blooming onions. So I Googled it. It's six. Six blooming onions, right? Now, there's some of you like this back row that's like, Bleh, six blooming onions. No way. Not even. That's gross. And then there's the rest of us <laughs> that's like, six blooming onions. Could I eat six blooming onions? Should I eat six blooming onions? Is this my Everest? <laughs> I'll laugh for myself. Thank you very much. I will laugh for myself. I like, here's the thing. I like to think that I'm a foodie, but not in a classy way. Like when I see a Cinnabon, I have to be physically restrained from running inside, ordering two of them, one to inhale and the other to just kind of rub all over me. Like, if I were going to get a tattoo, I'd just get a Cheeto hanging out back here. Like, what's up? Here we go. It's like a little snack every time I bend over. Mm. <laughs> I know. You and I are best friends. I know. We've found each other finally. Yeah, I love food. I have tried every kind. I love trying all kinds of food, but as a result, you know, you got to, like, uh, worry about losing weight or whatever, gaining weight. I hate it. It's horrible. I've tried every single diet on the planet. You name it. I've tried it, okay? I've tried it all. Uh, I recently was told by a nutritionist that I should just try this one. I should just try to only eat food that I can pronounce, and I was like, oh, pff, this is awesome. Yeah. That's why I never eat asparagus and cucumbers. <laughs> Great. Then, then I talked to someone else who's doing this intermittent fasting, right? That's where you just don't eat for 16 hours a day. I'm like, who can sleep for 16 hours? <laughs> I got stuff to do. It's ridiculous. I love, I love food. I think about food a lot. It's terrible. I've tried everything. And every year starts the same for me, right? It starts the same. I'm like, this is the year I'm going to get my body back. This is it. January, I'm amazing. And February rolls around and the Girl Scouts just show up everywhere. Just shoving their cookies in my face. What am I supposed to do? I will buy any food for charity. Charity is the name of my belly. <laughs> Hope is my butt. And faith is my thigh gap. Because sometimes you just got to believe in something you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? April. Oh, what would we do without April tonight? <laughs> April is single-handedly saving the show in June. I love it. Where else are we going on this journey, you guys? Oh, my goodness. I've tried everything. I tried doing a workout class called uh, Zumba. I don't know if anybody has done Zumba. Have you done Zumba? Yeah, Zumba is interesting. Zumba is like, how do I explain this? It's like a Latin dance class for people who can't dance. <laughs> 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 I did a Zumba class at my local YMCA. It was just like a C 
of just awkward people, all of us. We're just, we're trying to like look cute, but we're sweaty and we're tired. We've never worked out this much in our entire lives, and we're also trying to get down to a pit bull song. You know what I mean? It's like, (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) you feel like you're there. It's right. It's so bad. Like, (laughs) I'm on fire. (laughs) Like, what's happening? What am I doing? I don't know how to dance. I did a Zumba class. I also did a CrossFit class. CrossFit's very intense, right? CrossFit is all about like, hey, take that piano, strap it on your back, move it over there. I'm like, what? I can't, I don't know. I thought I was, is this a moving company or a workout class? Should be both, honestly. CrossFit is like, you know, like you're in Rocky IV and you're training to fight a Russian. It's like, I don't understand what this workout is supposed to be. It's terrible. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) April. April, she is the one here tonight who's laughing at my jokes. (laughs) April. Um, anyone here homeowners? If you're a homeowner, it's exciting. It's horrible, exciting, scary. I bought a home a few years ago before everything like skyrocketed and went out of control. It was an intense experience. Uh, just finding a home that you can afford is a lot. Like I went into it with eyes not really open. I wasn't sure what to expect to walk in. The real estate agent's like, "Here you go," and I'm like, "Oh, cool, carpet." in the kitchen okay yeah okay well at least we know where the smell's coming from great yeah oh did this oh look at that the doorknob it just fell out into my hands (laughs) that must be good luck is that oh okay oh oh, this room this is where the crime was committed (laughs) excellent okay great yeah then you go see three more houses and you're like okay so the murder house is the best one. All right, great. You know, you buy the murder house. Good for me. Yep, got that one. It's fine. I got rid of all the bad vibes. Don't worry about it. A couple of Bath and Body Work candles. We're good, you know? (laughs) So I'm a homeowner now, and I realized when I moved in, like, I don't have taste. I don't know how to decorate a home. I don't know what that means. Um, apparently, free stuff that you found is not a section at Home Goods. <laughs> they don't have that. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of like looking around, shopping in these last few years, and I've noticed a trend that everything in the stores says something. And I don't mean like, wow, that chair is so beautiful. It really speaks to me. No, no, no. I mean, everything literally says something. Like, it's a spice rack, and it's like, add a little spice to your life. Everything is telling me what to do all the time, right? I go into a friend's house, and you're like, okay, this is overwhelming, right? Everywhere you turn, you're like, live, laugh, love. Leave a sparkle wherever you go. Eat more plants. Do more yoga. Bless this mess. Sometimes it seems like practical advice, you know? Never trust a skinny cook. Okay. Sounds interesting. Got it. But I I don't know, you guys. I got to tell you that, like, find joy in the journey felt a little weird in the bathroom. Maybe I want to poop in a bad mood. (laughs) Maybe I had Taco Bell for dinner last night, (laughs) and there's not a lot of joy to be had on this journey tonight, okay? I don't know. Little sidebar, Taco Bell was recently like named one of the healthiest fast food restaurants in America. Yeah, right? That really, do you guys have a sign in your bathroom? (laughs) Yeah, Taco Bell, Taco Bell is like, all my friends in LA, I have friends in LA, like I do these cleanses. I'm like, yeah, I go to Taco Bell once a week. Got it. Cleanse complete. 
I, Taco Bell being the healthiest restaurant in America is a bizarre situation, okay? Because I don't know a single person that's ever walked inside a Taco Bell and been like, I'm here to make great decisions. Let's do this. Won't this be great? No, we, you've never even seen a line at the Taco Bell drive through when the sun's up. Because we're all waiting for the sun to go down. Because we're ashamed. <laughs> it's funny. We've, we're in this, like, we live in this world where they're always trying to help us make better decisions. Like uh, um, restaurants now put the calorie count on the menu. Like when you go to McDonald's, it's like food item price calorie. And you're like, this doesn't really change anything. <laughs> I mean, it just sort of changes the scenario, you know. So when I'm there by myself on a Tuesday at midnight in my stretchies, it's like, hey, McDonald's employee, <laughs> let's take this low point in both of our lives and add about 1,700 calories to it, shall we? And you better turn on the ice cream machine. I don't care if you cleaned it. Turn it on. Okay, Steve? <laughs> You're not on a name, one-on-one, -on -one, first name basis with your McDonald's employee. Who are you? The queen. Do you think the queen has ever eaten McDonald's? <laughs> I wonder about these things. These are the things that keep me up at night. <laughs> has the queen ever ordered a pizza and just picked up a slice? No. That's insane. a weird thought, isn't it? Think about it. Someone in here is like, I've never even, I, what's a pizza? I'm like, no. Oh, my goodness, you guys, what are we going to do? What was I talking about? Oh, joy in the journey. I talked about that. I'm not really sure, like, what's going to strike a chord, you know? Like, where are we going today? What makes you guys happy? What makes you happy? What makes you tick? I know what April likes. <laughs> she likes everything I say. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Let's continue this exciting journey that we are on together here. <sighs> let's talk about Christmas. I want to talk about Christmas for a little while. Um, love it. Not a controversial opinion. I love Christmas. Ooh, scandal. Um, love it. I think Christmas music is out of hand. I think Christmas music needs to calm the heck down. I just I think we should do some public service announcements, be like, hey, celebrities, <laughs> we don't want your Christmas albums. We don't want them. Your jazzy version of Jingle Bells, it's not better. It's not better. It's not. I mean, I would vote for someone if their entire political campaign was just to outlaw the song Santa Baby. Okay, that's a messed up song. No, Christmas is not sexy. Nope, there's no sexy Christmas. And by the way, Santa is married, so homewrecker. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no sexy Christmas. I'm not here for it. Um, I will say uh, I, I like the song Carol of the Bells. You know what song I'm talking about. But I, who, I don't know who wrote it, but that person's favorite holiday is Halloween. That's a spooky song. Think about sweet silver bells, silver, silver. ding dong, do. merry, 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 merry murder, merry, 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 merry murder. <laughs> That's a spooky song. You know it, MTV. I'm talking to you. I like your shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's a great shirt. M music television. It's been a while since they played music, but it's <laughs> it's a good shirt. Do you remember when they played music? <laughs> Today I was scrolling through, they were playing Titanic. Like, what's happening? Oh. Christmas is great. I love Christmas music, okay? But just it's too much. I, I want to hear from you guys <laughs> for the first time. Um, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think is the worst Christmas song is? Anybody? Worst Christmas song. I know the worst Christmas song. I have officially decided it. You tell me what you think. What's that? 
What's that song? Is that song you wrote? Is that an original Christmas? Ugh, another jingle bell spin-off like we need that in the world. What else? Yeah, rude song, right? Golly, let's be nice to our grandmas. Golly. <laughs> what else? Anybody? Worst Christmas song. There is a right answer, but I'll take all answers at this point. Anybody, anybody, anybody? All right, I'll tell you. The worst Christmas song ever made is by Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber has a Christmas song. It's more, it's more like a remix of uh, Little Drummer Boy. Little Drummer Boy, yeah, yeah. I'll sing it for you. You guys need it. Let's do this. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm cool. M think of me right now, Justin Biebs. Here we go. Bieber fever. Here we are. <laughs> Justin Biebs. Here's the song. Pa-rumpa pum pum. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the drum. Because the beat goes dumb. Playing for the sun. Playing for the king. Playing for the title. I'm surprised you didn't hear this in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's there's more. There's more. There's more. I'm so tight, I might go psycho. Stupid, stupid, love like Cupid. I'm a drummer boy. <laughs> what? Yeah, and I didn't mention Buster Rhymes joins him for a verse. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You know that was a bad day for Busta, right? He walked in, he's like, we're not friends, don't look at me, let's just get this over with, okay? Bad, Christmas music, it's out of control. Christmas movies, also out of control, all right? Every 45 seconds, a new original Hallmark Christmas movie is born. <laughs> and a child actor from the 90s rises again in all their glory. Hallmark movies, whoa, whoa. I told my husband he can't watch them with me anymore because he's always asking stupid questions like, haven't we seen this one before? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no, okay. In this movie, Sarah has a really hard time finding love. But she's about to find out that her grumpy boss is the one at an inn on Christmas Eve. You're thinking about Katie. Katie has a really hard time finding love. <laughs> but she's about to figure out that the grumpy innkeeper is the one at a different inn on Christmas Eve. So just let the fake snow and the weird, awkward pauses <laughs> just wash over you until you're dead inside, okay? That's what I'm saying. Lifetime's made a couple Christmas movies, but they're like sweet and cute, and I'm like, no. Lifetime, you know what you are. Let's make movies, Christmas movies, in the genre that we all love, right? Like, I want Lifetime movies that are like, when Mrs. Claus's Claus came out. Right? <laughs> or like Jack Frost nips at the wrong nose. Or like, baby, it's cold in here. The true story about one woman held against her will, forced to sing a duet with a man who she murdered and got away with it. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of movie we want. And every year, we got these crazy Christmas movies. And every year, all these holidays are about food, right? We got, like, Halloween, diabetes, right? Thanksgiving, just stuff yourself till you're sick. Christmas, fudge on everything, right? And then it's, like, uh, Valentine's, candy, Easter, jelly beans. It's chaos. And then June rolls around. And every ad on TV is like, it's swimsuit season. Are you ready? 
I'm like, no, how dare you? I am not ready. Thank you very much. What? What? So many people, are you ready for summer? Are you ready for summer? No, I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Extra strength deodorant? Sure, check. Great. Shave my legs? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I have uh, decided that uh, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not getting ready for summer. Nope, I'm going to enjoy the holidays. And then when summer rolls around, I'm going to show up at the pool. I'm going to take off my swimsuit cover up. I'm gonna be and I'm, I'm going to be voted most inspirational at the pool. People are going to look at me and be like, wow, she is so brave. <laughs> she is so brave. <laughs> I have a complicated relationship with summer in general, even like campfires, right? You get a group of guys and gals at a campfire, and it is just something else. I, even before you even get the campfire started it's a whole thing it becomes like this weird macho competition between the men it's like oh how do you start a fire oh yeah you do the tp oh i do the log cabin and there's always one guy that's like oh yeah well i can start a fire with a rock and my two teeth you know <laughs> meanwhile the women have started the blazing fire okay it's beautiful we've already got the party going and then the fire's going and like the front of you is melting the back of you is freezing Somebody's friend of a friend brings a guitar. You want to smash the guitar. You're like, no, Chad, we don't want to hear your original music. <laughs> no, knock it off. <laughs> There's always somebody who has like some weird superstition because you got the smoke in your face. They're like, oh, smoke follows beauty. And you're like, be quiet, okay? Whereas I have a one friend who's like, all you have to do is just say rabbit over and over again when this rabbit like you're sitting there like a psycho person rabbit 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 everyone thinks you're some idiot at the <laughs> fire okay what is happening summer it's so complicated for me every single year and one year i'm like i'm gonna be a good person i am going to volunteer i signed up to help out at a youth camp it was for teenage girls so everyone's like favorite demographic the <laughs> the nicest <laughs> yeah and uh, I showed up at this lake. We were all going to hang out at this camp. It was going to be great. I show up. You got these cute young teenage girls in their swimsuits. And they're in the phase of life where they're just eating chicken nuggets like grapes. Just like, pff, pff, you know, no big deal. And I'm at the phase of life where I recently woke up and actually the back of my arm just gave up. You know, I don't know what happened. I can no longer give high fives in a short sleeve t-shirt because of the initial shake and then the aftershock. <laughs> That's the phase of life I'm in, right? And I could see them. They were looking at me. They were like, eh, giving me like, Ugh, you know, that kind of action. So I just walked right up to him. Walked right up to him. I was like, ladies. <laughs> Guess what? I used to look just like you. And I slowly backed away in my weird swim skirt that I got at Costco. <laughs> this is your future, ladies! Then I belly flopped into the lake. <laughs> and they did not invite me back. <laughs> MTV, what are you doing with your life? How's life? Good. It's good. Wow, good. Rave reviews from MTV. Um, are you not, you're just, no? You're hanging in there. Hanging out. Are you from Carson City? No. Where are you from? Oh, fancy. Nice. Are you visiting or do you live here now? Where's Dayton? Oh, east. Yeah. See, Dayton. You say Dayton. I think Ohio. So we're not. I'm way off. Um, so Dayton. Lots of fun happening in Dayton. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. The wildlife in Dayton. How exotic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're getting called out. What brought you to Dayton? Just the tarantulas, the love of rattlesnakes, <laughs> the jackrabbits. Okay. Oh, 
So you want that wild life and the you like that wild Dayton life. Exciting. I live in Georgia. We have a lot of bugs in Georgia. It's kind of we have a lot of similar scary things. Um, I did not know that. I didn't know anything about the South. I moved there and um, summer rolled around and I literally we have just thousands of bugs banging on our windows in the summertime literally do they just fly up into the windows because they're trying to get away from all the really scary bugs that you can't see <laughs> that's what it is it's a horrifying horrifying jungle um i do like it but it is a weird place yeah the south makes me feel kind of like a garbage person everyone's very nice there you know one lady no joke i moved there i'm at the airport she stops me and she's like i think i need to pray for you yeah. And I was like, well, I am not getting on this airplane. I'll tell you that much. She prayed for me the whole time I was getting on the airplane. I'm like, I think I'm going to die. This is it. I prayed the whole flight. I made it. I made it. Yeah. South is way too nice for me. Way too nice. They, they really make you question everything you've ever done. Like, I don't, I'm not good enough. <laughs> was that funny? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Are you together? Yes. You're married. Do you have kids? Yes, I have you have adult kids? You do not. You're like 25. Stop it. How old are your kids? 22 and 18? You're almost done. <laughs> How does it feel? No, ki I have three kids. Three kids ages six, four, and ten months old. Yeah, I'm I'm in it. Yeah. I had a baby and it was like, what is happening? I didn't realize people were like, are you into super codependent relationships and hate sleep? You should have a baby. <laughs> like, what? Best part, first baby I ever had, I uh she was a a little hefty little thing, almost ten pounds. And uh, it was awesome. I had the baby. I went straight to Facebook, and I was like, I just lost 10 pounds in 28 hours. Take that, world. <laughs> Kids are crazy. They make you question everything in your life. You're like, oh, my goodness, this child has barfed on me so many times. The last time someone barfed on me was in college, and we don't talk anymore. This person... I let live inside my house. <laughs> they take over the everything. Having kids is a wild journey. It's a scary one. So are they like out of the house? 22 and 18? No, oh, that's fine. Keep them close. Keep them here while you got them, right? Are you from Carson? No, where are you from? New York? Dang, what brought you to Carson? Oh my goodness. Buffalo, New York. You talk about uh, winters in Buffalo. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys been back east out there for winter? I'm never going again. Is winter bad here? I don't know. No, it's pretty mild. All right. Yeah. What happened in the 80s in Tahoe? Yeah. Oh, you don't have snow anymore? Mm, interesting, interesting. You took it with you. All the snow turned into tarantulas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I got one more thing I'm going to do for you guys tonight. I don't know, you definitely didn't pay enough for this, but I'm going to do something fun here. I, uh, I had a... Uh, I have... A family. I have I have three brothers and two sisters. I have six kids in my family. They're all very talented, unique individuals. Um, my mom is a really interesting lady. She called me the other day, though, and she was like, you know what you should do? I have an idea for your comedy. You should incorporate your dance moves into your comedy. Yeah. I was like, this feels like it might be a backhanded compliment. <laughs> Is this something you guys are talking about? Like my dance moves? What's going on here? 
And here's the thing. I'm not a great dancer. Never have been, okay? Zumba, right? I already told you about it. It's the whole thing. It's very awkward. But my younger brother is a great dancer. He's actually a professional dancer. And not just like, I mean, he went to Juilliard for dance. Yeah, he's a big deal, okay? And I don't know if you know a lot about Juilliard, but they actually don't call it dance there. They call it dance. Doesn't matter where you're from. You could be from Kentucky and you're mid-sentence and you're like, dance. And when you say it, you say it and you look in, you don't look at anyone in the eyes. You're like, hey, I just love this dance. And you're like, what is <laughs> happening? This is so weird. And he went to Juilliard and he studied modern dance, modern dance. Uh, anybody familiar with the genre? Let me just tell you, they do not call it so you think you can modern dance for a reason. Yeah, because it's boring. Okay, it's, it's slow. It's, uh, have you ever been to a museum and looked at modern art? Yeah, sometimes you see modern art and you're like, mm, I kind of feel like I could do that. <laughs> Same thing with modern dance. You see, you're like, I feel like I could maybe do that but I will just get a job, <laughs> right? I went to see my brother perform once. Uh, it was the first time I was going to see him do a dance at Juilliard. And I walk in, I get my ticket. I'm so excited. We're so proud. It's been a journey, right? Getting him here, wow. Um, and he, <sighs> it was crazy. I sit down, the show starts, the curtains go up. The dancers came out on stage. He flipped everyone off and left. Then they came back out, and they did this weird thing, and they just walked around in a circle for a while, and then they left. Then they came back out. I kid you not. I, they, I think they stared at their hands for a good 45 minutes. And then after the show, everyone was like, oh my, that is amazing art. Wow, I am moved. This is so great. I'm sitting there like, then my brother comes out, he's like, oh, Jenna, did you get it? <laughs> I was like, uh-uh, no, I didn't. I don't get it, no. But he's the artist in the family, right? Not me. I'm out here every weekend schlepping it, making jokes, having a great time, hoping to make this guy with a mustache laugh just one time in a show, okay? One time. That's all I'm going for. And I get no respect in my family. None. No respect at all, right? But I think I deserve some respect. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So I have prepared something for y'all. And this is a big freaking deal, all right? I prepared, so I don't even know if you can handle it. <laughs> all right? This is very special. Very few audiences get this, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you modern comedy. Did you get it? It was about farts. Thank you guys so much. I'm Jenna Kim Jones. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Oscar. You guys keep it going one more time for Jenna Kim Jones, ladies and gentlemen. That was good stuff, man. That was, uh, did you guys have fun tonight? Did you guys ever enjoy yourselves? Good. Well, you fooled us, shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, no, seriously, listen, you know, when you've been doing this as long as, uh, as Jenna and I have, you, you, you've gone around, man, you've done a lot of small shows in small towns, and you're always kind of worried, like, how are the smaller crowds going to react, are they going to have energy, are they going to be a good crowd, and you guys, man, 
are the reason why we worry about that shit. <laughs> so I implore you to go home and do some fucking homework next time. So when you come back and try this again, no, with the exception of April, uh, you guys were a group. That's true. You were, uh, was a, no, I'm kidding. You know, you know look at, I mean, look, Jenna's dropping pit bull references and the fucking the, uh, April's like, yeah. And then you guys are like, I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> like, which, why would you? He's only been around for, you know, 20 fucking years. So why would you? No, no, it's good. Uh, listen, no, that was, f this was fun. It was fun. Always a fun weekend at the Carson Comedy Club. You guys were, uh, uh, you know, a couple of full tanks of gas. So that's good. Um, thank you guys so much. If the regulars, please keep coming back and supporting the comedy, man. Have a good time. Give it up one more time for your headliner, Jenna Kim Jones. Come back, have fun, support, go gamble, win some money, man. Thanks for coming out. I'm Oscar Obis. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>